is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mandang umaga sa inyong lahat at magandang gabi sa mga nasa ibang bansa na kas- nakasama natin sa ating pagmimisa ngayong umagang ito. We have reached the fifth day. Ang ikalimang araw ng tinatawag nating Easter Octave. We have reached the fifth day of the Easter Octave. Our gospel reading for today, my dear brothers and sisters, is a continuation of the gospel yesterday. You remember the Emmaus walk? You remember the Emmaus story? Cleophas and his unnamed companion walking on the way to Emmaus, they were discussing what had happened to Jesus and suddenly the Lord joined them in the conversation but they did not realize that it was the risen Jesus. It was only at the breaking of bread when they began to realize that this man with them is nobody else but the resurrected Christ. So our gospel today is a continuation of yesterday's Emmaus story. It narrates another post-resurrection manifestation of the Lord. Our Lord resurrected and He showed Himself to different people. He showed Himself to Mary Magdalene and to the other Marys and to the other women. He showed Himself to Peter and John, the beloved disciple. He showed Himself to the eleven disciples. He showed Himself to the disciples again at the Sea of Tiberias. He showed Himself to Thomas the Doubter. Many times, the Lord revealed Himself to different people on different occasions. My dear friends in Christ, the gospel today is about the manifestation or the appearance of the risen Jesus to the 11 apostles. Why 11? Some of you might be wondering, why not 12? In the meantime, one of them betrayed the Lord. That is why there are only 11 apostles left who witness and who personally met the resurrected Christ. And the recent Christ gives proof of the reality of the resurrection. He explains to them the meaning of His death, the meaning of His passion, the meaning of the resurrection. And He commands them to preach the gospel to all nations. My dear brothers and sisters, the first part of our gospel for today he stresses the reality of the resurrection. The risen Lord in front of them was not a phantom. He is not a product of hallucination. The Lord is not a ghost. He is not an imaginary vision. He was real. The Jesus of history who died was in truth the Christ of faith who rose from the dead. And so what does this all tell us? It is telling us that Christianity, that our religion, that our spiritual life, that our relationship with God, it is telling us that Christianity is not founded on the dreams of men's disordered or crazy minds. It is not founded on the visions of their fevered eyes. Christianity is anchored on one who in actual historical fact faced and fought and conquered death and rose again. In short, the resurrection is a historical event. It is not a product of one's imagination. It is a historical fact. It happened to a historical person. 
the eleven apostles were not drunk, they were not sleepy. When the risen Christ appeared to them, they were awake and they were lucid. They knew all along what was going on. And so as we continue with our reflection about the reality of the resurrection, my dear friends, in spite of what is happening all over the world, in spite of what is happening in our country, let us remain joyful. Let us be joyful. Let us be cheerful. Let us be joyful and let us be prayerful. Let us be hopeful. Easter is about new life. Easter is about fresh beginnings. There is light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how long, no matter how wide the tunnel is. Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Happy Easter.